So first, I would like to start with where should we be looking at for these entry level networking roles? So the first thing that comes to my mind is, the, of course, the job boards. So with the job boards, this is where I'm referring to sites like Indeed, LinkedIn and Dice. Those are my big three job boards whenever I'm cruising around in these job streets or whenever I'm job hunting. I always revert back to those three. So usually, like I said, Indeed is pretty good. Uh, I had a lot of luck on Indeed. One thing that's, I think, a good feature with Indeed is that a recruiter is able to find your resume, your information on Indeed and message you through Indeed. But then also when we look at a website like LinkedIn. So LinkedIn is real valuable too. Uh, all depends on how you use it. So with LinkedIn, one neat feature I like about it is that sometimes whoever posts the job, because they have a job feature on LinkedIn, whoever posts that job, a lot of times it shows their profile. So with that being said, you can add that person as a friend or follow them. And then maybe you can gradually, you know, inbox them, let them know that you saw this position is available and want to know if you could send them your resume or let them know that you applied to that position. You know, you don't want to be overbearing where you're kind of trying to force them to look at your resume or anything like that. But, you know, you kind of want to be cordial with it. You know, you want to just build up a good rapport. But I think this is one thing that LinkedIn allows you to do because you are able to see whoever posts up a job. Sometimes you'll notice that the person that posts a job may be a recruiter. Uh, there's a lot of recruiters on LinkedIn. Uh, it is possible to get hit up on LinkedIn by recruiters because a lot of times if if recruiters, they're searching for a certain position, a lot of times they know what certifications that position may be calling for or that certification may be listed in the job description. So inside of LinkedIn, you got advanced features that you can pay for, especially on the recruitment side where they can search uh, a broad area and say, okay, show me who all has a CCNA certification. So if you had that certification on your profile and you're in that area, nine times out of 10, your profile is going to pull up for that recruiter. So then they can go down and kind of carve out whoever they want to message or whoever would they want to connect with. But LinkedIn, I think is a gold mine from that aspect, being that you can network on LinkedIn. Then also just posting on LinkedIn, you know, you get to where you know, you're doing networking projects or you're doing some studying uh, uh, that pertains to the CCNA, you know, just post up what you're doing. You know, a lot of people call it practice in public. You know, you just show up different labs you're doing, things like that, start posting it. And then that way, a lot of recruiters will put their eyes on you. And a lot of times someone may see you and recommend you just because they start seeing your, your stuff popping up on LinkedIn all the time. So like I said, Indeed and LinkedIn. And then we get the Dice. So Dice is probably the most tech focused site out of the out of the three so like i said dice is it focused mainly uh it has a lot of different positions on there also uh for dice like i said i have some friends that you know they swear by dice anytime they're looking for a new position they're going to dice to get their new position or to start looking to seeing what's available so within within these bit three i think you have a good opportunity to see what's out there and possibly start landing some interviews, get those reps into where you're getting comfortable, then hopefully land your first entry level role. And then the last thing on this list is that under the job board list would be Glassdoor. So Glassdoor, you can't really search for jobs on there, but what Glassdoor comes in handy is if I'm about to put in an application at a organization, I can look on Glassdoor and see what others say about that organization. So that's real good uh, because I'm able to see that if the position I'm applying for, if someone from that position has left a recommend a review or anything about that job, I can go in and kind of see a little bit of what I'm about to get into. So that could either sway, sway you towards that job or sway you away from it. But I think Glassdoor is a good tool. Sometimes Glassdoor may ask for a fee. Or uh, sometimes I think they let you use it free long as you leave a review on a job that you was currently at or a job that you used to work at. So like I said, with Glassdoor, I think it's a good tool to use also. The next place that we're going to look for are entry level networking roles. This is going to be our IT staffing and recruitment agencies. So I think a lot of people sleep on these agencies here. Uh, like I said, I didn't know they existed until 
I first started my job hunt after I obtained my CCNA. But some of the big ones that we can name here is Robert Half, Tech Systems, Apex Systems, Insight Global. So most of those are recruitment agencies. And pretty much what they do is, you know, they hire recruiters. And basically, those recruiters get job orders. Let's say a recruiter get a job order for a network engineer or a network administrator. Then it's that recruiter's job to go out and find the best fit for that position. So a lot of times you can find jobs on these recruitment agencies' website. So they all have websites and they all have a jobs category on their website. So you can go there and see directly what jobs they have in your area. It even shows you how to apply. But then also, what a lot of them do is you'll see as you start looking through LinkedIn dice and things like that, you'll see some of the listings that says it was listed by one of these recruitment companies. So like I said, these recruitment companies, I think it provides a good opportunity, especially for someone, let's say um, you don't mind traveling. You don't mind traveling. Uh, let's say that you're a single person. You may not have a lot of responsibility right now. So if this is you, a lot of times, I think the unique aspect is if I could rewind time, this might've been the way I would have tried to go also is that a lot of times with the recruitment agency. So if they send you on a position, let's say that position may be a contract role that may be six months. So usually as you're working in that position for six months, let's say you're working a network, a network technician role for six months, you're doing this for six months. After that six months is up, a lot of times that recruitment company will try to have you another job or another contract to go to, which may be another six months or it may be another year. But let's say once you go there, you're now working as a network administrator. So you're working as a network administrator. So within a year, you done held a position in one environment as a network technician and another environment as a network administrator. So I think the beauty of some of these staffing and recruitment agencies, especially if you're younger, you're not looking for somewhere where, you know, you want to stay forever. But the beauty with these that I like is you're able to see a lot of different environments in a short amount of time. So whereas if you take my experience, my experience was mostly at a hospital where I stayed there roughly about 10 years. Now, in a hospital environment, you do see a lot of different things, and sometimes the structure of your different departments is a little bit different from most places to where you get a chance to put your hands on a lot of stuff. You know, I did get a chance to put my hands on a lot of stuff. I was, you know, involved in a lot of different little projects and things like that. But I did 10 years in one environment. So, yes, I learned that environment pretty well, but just think of, from a experience standpoint that if I would have went to Robert Half first for six months, then I would have went to another position for Robert Half for a year. Then I would have went to another position for Robert Half for six months or something like that. So in 10 years, I would have had Buku. Well, in 10 years, you might not want to be with a recruitment company for 10 years. But as you can see, Within two to three years, I done been in three different environments and learned those environments and learned how they do things. And then also around the time you're going to do different environments, you're going to meet a lot of people that may be better than you because as you come into those positions, you're going to be on teams with engineers and architects. So the beauty of that is you can now learn from them. You take some of their skill sets, you add it to your tool belt. It helps you out along the way. That way you're leveling up at each one of these positions you're going to. And then when you finally say, okay, I want to find that home where I can stay here for a couple of years. Hopefully I can retire from here or whatever's going on. But by the time you look, start looking for that, you already got all the experience that they're going to be asking for. So like I said, the second thing is IT staffing companies and these recruitment agencies. Like I said, these are highly recommended, especially if, you can afford to jump around to different positions like this. And then the third place to look for these entry level networking roles, I would say is the company's website. So look around in your area, think about what companies is out there. A lot of companies need IT support. So there should be a lot of availability, especially if you're in a large city or something like that. But look around at the different organizations that's around you. So think of healthcare organizations, uh, look at universities, maybe community colleges, Look at uh, the government jobs website for your county. 
things like that. So a lot of times these places may put the job on their website before they put it on a site like Indeed or Dice. So it's always good to have a list of different companies that you go directly to their website and see what jobs they have available. So by doing this, like I said, some places, they put them on the website first. So this way, you, you may not have a lot of competition because it ain't on a large site like Indeed that's getting a lot of traffic and things like that. But a lot of times, like I said, this is where you can find some gems like the healthcare. I want to say that's probably how I got into healthcare. I looked up directly on their website. So like I said, just going directly to that job's website. And then when you're thinking about the different companies, look at different tech companies in your area, uh, your local ISP. Let's say if you got a, a local or small ISP that may be local to just that town, those will be good places to get in, learn the ropes, get your feet wet, get your experience, and then start to grow throughout your career. So you, it's possible to find a lot of entry-level roles and like I said, look at the universities, look at the hospitals, look at the community colleges, look at the government jobs in your area, different tech companies and the small ISPs. So now that we got a list of where we're going to start looking at for these entry level roles, next we're going to start looking at what roles are we going to be looking for. So one of the first categories within this is your general IT jobs. So your general IT jobs, those are going to be your help desk jobs, your IT support jobs. Your technical support jobs, you may also hear this called desktop support, and also your field technician may fall up in here. So usually this is that general IT job. So a lot of times these are perfect for someone looking for an entry-level role, even though you have a CCNA, and that CCNA is mainly geared towards networking, but all of these positions I just named deals with networking. So everything you do in the help desk, a lot of times are not everything but most of the stuff you're going to do a lot of it you're going to need that networking knowledge so a lot of times in these positions when there's an opening even though you got no experience but you got the certification i would go ahead and apply for these positions because a lot of times someone may give you a break the same way that someone gave me a break so i was applying for these positions here and someone saw my resume and saw that oh he, he don't have no experience, but he has a CCNA. So that lets me know that he's serious and he do have some computer knowledge, preferably probably more networking knowledge. But this is a good candidate for somebody to get started in this help desk role or this IT support role and then start to work their way up. So that's pretty much the same thing that happened to me. So these roles here, a lot of times, like I said, they may ask for maybe zero to three years experience or one to three years experience. A lot of times I would still apply for, cause some of them may say one to three years experience or equivalent uh, education or certification. So a lot of times, like I say, being that you got the certification, I would go ahead and apply for it. Just here, we're looking for this entry level role where we can go in and get our foot in the door. And then the second type of job that we can look for is the jobs that pertain to a lot of entry-level networking roles. Some of those jobs are going to be the network technician. So network technician, this role has a vast amount of duties. It depends on the organization. Like I said, I was a technician, but I mainly worked with a lot of the engineers where, you know, I wasn't really restricted on a lot of stuff. So in that way, it allowed me to see a lot of things and do a lot of things where I know another person that's a network technician and the only thing they do is rack and stack. You know, they rack and stack, get connectivity. The next the next higher up network uh, personnel remote seeing configures the device. So this position, it can be, it's going to depend on the organization. If it's a large organization, if it's a small organization. So and then you got a knock technician. So this knock technician, this is also good for someone that just obtained their CCNA. Or you can be in this network operations center where you may have different duties that you do every night or depending on the shift that you're working. And then from there, you move on to the junior network engineer. And I say this junior network engineer is also about the same level as a network analyst or network admin. So usually if we're going from lowest on up, usually you would start with a network technician. Then that network te technician would move up to a network analyst or a network admin. Some places may call it a junior network engineer because you're not a 
network engineer yet. So you're up under the network engineer, which is where those analysts and admin positions fall at. So with this here, this will be the perfect position that um, I wish for you to get because this here gives you a jump start where you don't have to go through maybe that help desk and talking on the phones where you can get into one of these positions, you know, stay here for roughly a couple of years, maybe one to three years. I would say at least two, you know, two, three years, get your experience up, you know, then hopefully the organization that you land at, they allow you to progress within that organization to that way you can move on up from a network analyst, network admin on up to an engineer and hopefully a senior engineer. And then we have the last position that I could think about is the data center technician. So this is also a entry level position for someone with a CCNA that's geared mainly towards networking. So these are the positions that I think that you should hone in on in your job hunting process. So those general IT roles, as well as some of these entry level networking roles or some of these lower level networking roles. You know, what you don't want to do is with no experience or anything, you don't want to start applying for senior engineer roles, which, like I said, that's one of the mistakes I remember doing when I was out here job hunting. So I was I had a CCNA. I thought I was the top dog. You know, I was applying for a senior engineer. I saw senior architect. I applied. I ain't get no call back, but I applied. So, like I said, you want to stick to some of the entry level roles. And there's a couple of other roles that I may not have mentioned, but a lot of times, just look at the hierarchy. Usually, that hierarchy is going to go from technician to analyst or admin, then to engineer. So, I say anything technician, analyst, admin, I say all of that is fair game for you.